Hey guys, Doug the Michigan Piper coming to you from the Pipe Rest tonight. And uh, it's one of those times where you just need to relax. <laughs> um, uh, you know, the day went okay, a little stressful, but then you ever had those times where it's like all of a sudden everything hits in within five minutes? It just seemed like it did. So I'm taking a deep breath. And um, actually, believe it or not, I'm smoking a church warden today. This is my K. Woody church warden that I got at the Columbus show. And I don't know if I can get up there to get it focused in enough, but uh, probably not. Um, it's a nice little pipe, guys. Uh, the thing is, I never, I never smoke it. Um, in the few months that I've owned it, I've maybe smoked it two or three times. Now, I don't mean that I don't want to smoke it, but... Uh, you know, just it, it's it's a novelty for me. Um, and today, <clears throat> Average John was talking about uh, Cornell and Deal's autumn evening, and I'm sitting at work. I'm like, man, that that sounds good. So I came home, and uh, by the way, I'm doing the mint medley tea in my country. I always want to say country gentleman, my distinguished gentleman mug. Um, anyway. So I came home and I laid the, my autumn evening out because it needs some dry time. And this is a little 7, 11, 7 by 11 room and it just filled, the, it has one of the best 10 notes um, that I've ever smelled. And it just filled this room. It was just like, just the smell of the 10 note alone uh, was beautiful. Anyway, the reason I was doing this video is because I, was, I had some thoughts. And no, I'm not trying to be a wannabe Irishman, guys. I know I'm wearing camouflage and a, <laughs> a flat cap and smoking a, a church warden. But uh, the, the hat's so mama doesn't have to smell it as much. And I just didn't feel like putting anything different on. So I know I'm a hodgepodge tonight, but it has nothing to do with this video. Um, I will tell you that uh, I've been doing a lot of, lot of uh, thinking lately about marriage. And, uh, you know, how, how happy I am. You know, my last video I talked about aging well and how happy I am with that, with how the aging process is going. Or I should say how comfortable I am with that. And, uh, you know, I, I've been thinking about marriage and my wife and I have been married for over 30 years now and you know, we had some dark times, uh, one in particular, where we were separated for several months. And, uh, uh, you know, we got married real, real young. I, I don't think there's a person that saw us get married that wondered if it didn't, if it wasn't going to last. Um, but we, both, we both had some maturity issues to get over, you know, and, and figure out who we were. But we managed, you know, by the grace of God, we managed. And uh, speaking of God, I think if, if anybody ever asked me um, if I ever had uh, advice for, for a new marriage, <clears throat> the best piece of advice or the best information I ever got uh, when it comes to marriage was by a guy, uh, from a guy by the name of Dennis Rainey. And I'll put his information in the bucket because uh, I can't remember the name of the book right now. But he does a lot of video series. I'd rather watch a video series than read the book, tell you the truth. But uh, he has this thing that he came up with called the crazy cycle. And it really hit our marriage on the head. And uh, you got to back up a little bit to be able to explain the crazy cycle. Um, if you go to Ephesians, and again, I'll put this, I'll put the verse down in in the bucket. Um, I believe it's chapter 5. Paul tells husbands to uh, love their wives and wives to respect their husbands. And, uh, you know, Rainey talks about how it's not an accident that Paul didn't say 
husbands love your wives and wives love your husbands, uh, or wives respect your husbands and husbands respect your wives. Um, and he goes on to talk about how men, <clears throat> as men in general, were built uh, to respect one another. You know, we go into a room of men and you can almost feel it. You know, certain guys get more respect than other guys or even if you're not if you're not trying to and I'm not saying we all go in a room it's like how can I respect that guy um, but you guys you know most of you if not all of you know what I'm talking about conversely uh, if you get a woman a, a group full of women uh, in general um, they much more show love and express love than they do respect so what we're being told in, in that scripture is that you know Work on the thing that you're not strongest on. Men, you're strong on respect. So I'm not going to tell you to, to, to respect your wife. I'm going to tell you to love your wife. And women, you're strong on love. I'm not going to tell you to love your husband. You're not going to do that. And what I'm telling you is you need to respect your husband. And so with that as kind of the foundation of, of Rainey's book, or of, of that section of his book, he goes on to talk about the crazy cycle, which is, <clears throat> the lack of that instruction or the lack of following that instruction. And what I mean by that is, uh, take for instance, um, my wife says something to me that I take as disrespectful whether it is or not. So what is my reaction to that? Well, whether it's on purpose or <clears throat> inadvertently, I'm going to treat her less lovingly if I fall, you know, on, on my own understanding and my own actions. I'm going to withdraw. So my wife sees me withdraw and is hurt by that because now it appears that I'm not being loving. Whether I, like I said, whether I'm doing it on purpose or not. So her answer is to complain, nag. Maybe it's neither. Maybe she's just trying to explain. But it comes across to me as lack of respect. And so then this perpetuates. The more stuff she does that I view as disrespectful, then the more knee-jerk stuff that I'm going to do in reaction to her that she takes as unloving. And in the end, you're on this cycle. She does something unloving, un, uh, disrespectful, so I do something unloving. She, so then she does something disrespectful, and it goes on and on and on. Before you know it, you're riding this thing like a unicycle from hell. I mean, just on down the road. And when I... Uh, when I really contemplated this, when I read this in the book, it was like, doggone it, man, he's, he's talking about my marriage. How do, you, how, do you, how do you find this stuff out? And there are certain things like that you find out a lot of times. It's like, holy crap, man, this guy's, this guy's like, must be living in my closet or something. The more you find out that, that so much of us are the same. Um, and I think that, you know, for me, if I could give anybody respect, or <laughs> respect, advice on a new marriage that would be it uh, is that just pay attention to that you know and and unfortunately in our day uh, respect when you talk about wives respecting their husbands um, it's taken completely out of context and people think you know heaven forbid you use the word submit you know it, it, it everybody's talking about well you know submit or respect she's not supposed to bow down to you and it's like well yeah nowhere in the bible does it say your wife's supposed to bow down to you that's that's not the point uh one of my one of my frustrations is when guys say oh right there it says my wife's supposed to submit to me and usually the first question i ask is what well, did you read just past that because we're just past where it says submit it also says love your wives like christ like the love the church well how does christ love the church he died for the church um he gave up his life for the church he gave up his kingdom momentarily for the church so that uh, he can save the church. That's how we're supposed to treat our wives. There's nothing on this earth that we should be putting in front of our wives. 
and uh, but things are taken out of context, and we live in a you know shoot first and ask questions later society. So um, then before I go on too too much down that rabbit hole, guys, I just wanted to say you know that's that's kind of my my two cents. You know uh, when it comes to marriage, that if I could give anybody marriage advice, it would be to to try to stay on that and and. Or I should say, stay off of the crazy cycle. And, and the way you do that is that, you know, when you start having conflict, you ask yourself, how, how is she seeing me as being unloving? You know, my wife and I don't have it all, you know, squared away. But, you know, there's there's times when, you know, I'll sit, come to sit down next to her and I'll grab her hand. And I, you know, it, it's hard. It's so hard, especially when you're mad, right? But I'll grab her hand and, you know, I, okay, where did we go wrong? Um, you know, where did I go wrong or... or how are you seeing this? And then I got to give her time to reply. Uh, and the, and by giving her time to reply, that's me being loving. I'm hearing her. I'm letting her express herself. It doesn't matter if she says something that's totally off the wall and completely wrong about what I did. My job is to love her by hearing her out. I can always circle around later if I need to and just say, hey, you know, so you said this. That's not how I was, that's not what I meant. I, I, you know, believe me, that's not what I meant or whatever, you, you know, however you want to address it, if you address it. And that's not always to be addressed. So, um, guys, that's that's it. That's uh, my views on, or one of my many views on marriage. But what I think is one of the most important important thing is to understand that crazy cycle, uh, and to be able to to know when you're on it and how to get off of it. So, uh, guys, I am going to savor this autumn evening and uh, just contemplate that myself. So. I hope you're all doing well. Until next time, take care.